Hello and welcome to the Chatty Boy podcast, episode number one. Well, episode ten, technically. But now that it's a podcast, I don't know. Do I start it at one? Do I start it at ten? I'm thinking one. I'm thinking episode number one, clean slate, start again. So I've already done nine of these of these weird things. Um, but now I'm turning it into a podcast, a more audio-based form, with the optional video, if you're so inclined. I think I'm going to renumber it. Renumber it? Rename it? Number it? Renumber it? Reenumerate? I don't know. So this is episode number one of the Chatty Boy podcast. Hopefully, by the time you've seen this on YouTube, because let's be honest, this is the first place you're going to see the first iteration of the Chatty Boy podcast. Hopefully, it'll be on iTunes, SoundCloud, and other podcast services. Fingers crossed, if I can figure it out, if I can figure out how the hell the internet actually works, I make no promises. I cannot make promises. I am an inept human being at best. So, episode number one, what can you expect? from the Chatty Boy podcast. I think that's a good way to start this out, to start out this new venture, this new this new idea, this new intellectual 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 property of mine. Basically, the Chatty Boy podcast is me and a microphone rambling until I feel like I've rambled enough. So obviously the Daryl Does channel is now video game centric, but that doesn't mean that the Chatty Boy podcast is going to be all about games. Because I like other things as well. I like to chat other things. I like to chat. I like to chat a lot of bollocks. So there's going to be a lot more bollocks than just video games. So what that looks like in the future, I I honestly cannot say. I can't say. This is this is a wild ride we're taking. Everything else on the channel is planned to perfection. This, however, yeah, could go either way. Eventually, I do want to have a two mics set up so I can begin having guests on, I can begin having conversations with people rather than it be just me on my own. I can imagine that eventually that may get a little bit boring. So today, episode number one, what are we talking about? Uh, Even though I've just said we're not going to be talking about video games all the time on this podcast, it looks like the first topic I have to speak about, I have to, is video game related. So as of recording this, just 24 hours ago, probably less than 24 hours now, we had news that Electronic Arse, yes, Electronic Arse, have shut down the developer, the studio, one of the great game devs of recent years, Visceral. Um, So if you didn't know, Visceral are responsible for the Dead Space series, easily one of the best horror franchises in video games. Dead Space 1 and 2 were excellent, excellent games that garnered a big following and a big, well, a big cult following, really. Um, Dead Space 3 kind of kind of lost track of what that was, in a sense, mainly because of EA's push to force microtransactions into it and kind of make Dead Space 3 a service rather than an experience. Ultimately, that meant that Dead Space 3 didn't sell as well as EA had hoped it would. As such, Visceral got demoted from working on the Dead Space series and working on their own games to busy work, really. They they helped out on games like Battlefield Hardline, which, as we all know, was a roaring fucking success. It wasn't. But recently, things were looking up for Visceral. They had recently acquired the talent of Amy Hennig. Um, she was the writer on the Uncharted series, the original three. The original three? One, two, and three? Would they be the originals? I don't know. But yeah, she was the writer on the first three Uncharted games. So she knew her shit. And they were working on a linear, story-driven Star Wars game. Uh, A trailer dropped for it in 2016 at E3. It looked like it was shaping up to be a kind of third-person action-adventure, story-driven game set in the Star Wars universe. You know, kind of exploring different, different themes and ideas around Star Wars, different characters, different different potential plot lines. And with Amy Hennig as the... I think she was the game's director. I think she was the game's director. And with Amy Hennig at the helm of, of this game, you just knew that it was going to pan out into something pretty fucking special, just as Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 did. And yesterday, EA put a blog post out explaining why they were closing down Visceral, why they were moving production of this new Star Wars game to something else, to somewhere else, to make it a little different. Now, I'll just read uh, a, a short section of of that blog post, and you can make your mind up for yourself, really, because I think it's complete fucking bollocks, personally. 
So they said, quote, Our Visceral Studio has been developing an action-adventure title set in the Star Wars universe. In its current form, it was shaking up to be a story-based linear adventure game. Throughout the development process, we have been testing the game concept with players, listening to the feedback about what and how they want to play, and closely tracking fundamental shifts in the marketplace. That already rang alarm bells. Fundamental shifts in the marketplace. They are more concerned with making money. They're more concerned with making money. I'll carry on. It has become clear that to deliver an experience that players will want to come back to and enjoy for a long time to come, we need to pivot the design. And I'm going to end the quote there. End quote, yeah. That's all you need to know, really. Okay. So the problem here. Fundamental shifts in the marketplace. Mentioned it before. To be fair to EA, as fair as you can be to those wankers, they are a business, and this is a business decision. They are a business that wants to make money. And unfortunately, the way that video games seem to be making money nowadays is in the way that they've described in that blog post, in the second sentence of what I read. It has become clear that to deliver an experience that players will want to come back to and enjoy for a long time to come, we need to pivot the design. They want to make they want to make something like Destiny. From that, it seems like they want to make something like Destiny, something that's open-ended. And actually, later on in the blog post, what did they say? Uh, we are shifting the game to be a broader experience that allows for more variety and player agency. It's fuck it. They want to make it open-ended. They want to make it an online-only kind of thing, I'm thinking, with this. It seems to me like they've... They've seen the success of games like Destiny, of these online shooters, of these kind of hub world experiences. And they know that they are more profitable than the linear narrative driven games. And like I said, this is just pure business on EA's point. They are more concerned with the profitability of their games rather than the integrity of them. They are following suit, following the trend, following what is popular to make a game that they can, I'm imagining plow to fucking death with microtransactions, loot boxes, overpriced cosmetic DLC. Because that's the kind of thing that makes money now. That's the kind of thing that makes these giant publishers big money. It's exactly what Activision are doing with Destiny. It's exactly what Ubisoft have done with The Division. And by all fucking accounts, apparently, having Star Wars Battlefront 2 lauded with fucking loot boxes that is going to make EA inordinate amounts of money off the Star Wars franchise isn't enough. This is greed overtaking the the art of games. And for me, that is utterly, utterly depressing as a fan of games, as a fan of the medium, as someone who has actually kind of relied on games to get them through tough times. It's it's as if my favourite art form is being monopolised and commodified. And in a way, I suppose that's the result of capitalism. That That is the way that these things are going, you know? Games are a product of capitalism and... To not make money off them is kind of fucking stupid. But there's a, I feel like there's a right and a wrong way to treat your audience, to treat your fans. And for me now, this absolutely just... It just soils the Star Wars franchise in terms of in terms of the video game side of it. I already don't want anything to do with Star Wars Battlefront 2 because of the, that shitty loot box system. And now, just a week out after that controversy, they, they, they've, they've pulled this fucking move. I mean, seriously... They say they've been listening to fans that don't want a story-driven game. They don't want a linear narrative. Are you fucking for real? One of the best-selling games of this year, Horizon Zero Dawn. Open-ended, I grant you. But not not in the way that EA are going to make it. They're not going to make a fucking Star Wars Horizon, are they? Horizon Zero Dawn was linear to an extent. It was narrative-driven. The whole point of it was the story. Could this Visceral game have been like that? Quite possibly, given their track record with Dead Space. You know, Visceral knew what they were doing. Those developers knew what they were doing. Those guys, they had it nailed. The trailer looked incredible from E3 last year. They had a lot going for them on this project. A lot that the fans were happy about and excited about and they wanted to see. And yet, there was no profitability in it. There was no... There was nothing to market. There was nothing to sell to the consumer after the full price game. and. As a business model, I I can understand why that isn't a good idea from a purely, purely business perspective. But now EA have further sullied their already wank reputation. And to be honest, it couldn't be more obvious what a complete and utter cock-up it has been on their part. Because nobody, nobody I've seen is happy about this. 
Nobody on Twitter, nobody on Reddit, no news story, no comment section in those news stories, no comment section in any video ever. Nobody is happy that this has happened. The only person that is happy is EA because they have the potential to make more and more cash because that is all they're concerned about because they are electronic arseholes. Let's be honest, they're arseholes. And as much as they say that they are trying to deliver something the player wants, they clearly fucking aren't. And really, this is just another example of where this kind of video game industry is going, where it's leaning more towards profitability and marketability than artistic integrity. And that's depressing. It genuinely is depressing. It's especially sad because the giant publishers, the ones with basically with all the with all the weight in the industry, with all the kind of clout and the and the majority share of 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 the audience, they are the ones that that are pushing this. You don't see this with with indie developers or even indie publishers like Devolver Digital. They're not trying to nickel and dime everybody. They're not trying to squeeze cash out of you. And yet the ones with the most influence, the Activisions, the EAs, the Ubisofts, they're all they're all using this and using developers as well, using using developers and using the, the medium of games to drive sales. I feel like they're not respecting video games in the least bit. They're, make, they're making a fucking mug of us gamers. Because let's be honest, we're going to buy whatever this Star Wars product looks like out of morbid curiosity. We're going to want to know what it was, what it is, and if there's any hint of what it could be. I mean, you never know. It could turn out to be like a wholesome game. It could it could turn out to be a pretty decent game, but I have very, very, very serious doubts on that now. All the team from Visceral have been let go or moved on to other projects, which is a, a fucking bullshit statement it's a waste of talent for one and whether or not amy hennig is attached to the the project still remains to be seen you never know within the next week or so that could come out at this point this will be outdated but as i don't know completely disheartened by the thing i love most well done ea well done my hope is um that the people from visceral do move on to something else maybe even stick together it's something that um Jim Sterling said in one of his videos he hopes that he hopes that the, the visceral team do kind of break away and get together and figure out their own path their own way because as Jim Sterling said he is interested to see what those kind of minds can come up with on their own and I completely echo that sentiment I would love to see what an independent visceral studios can come up with one that's not tied down by an, a huge publisher trying to make the most out of out of these games because you know full well with games like Shadow of War Star Wars Battlefront 2 all these kind of these games that are now being rammed with loot boxes, you know full well that they that is never never the developer's intentions. The deve- surely not. Surely it can't be. I, I genuinely can't see the developer of Forza wanting to push loot boxes into its game. I just don't see that. I don't see that at all. I feel like that is a mandate pushed by the publisher, not by the developer. That's the most gutting thing about this, is these people that are working on these games, these people that are making pieces of art they're pouring their livelihood into this and their soul into creating something for the fans that that will be brilliant and in most cases it is i mean look at shadow of war all round a wonderful game at its core but marred by the fact that warner brothers needs to make fucking money from it needs to well needs to make more money than it has to and that puts people off it's put me off it's put me off wanting to buy shadow of war it's put me off wanting to spend money on star wars battlefront 2 and it has grossly put me off destiny you know, I don't want to support this system, but it seems like this system isn't going anywhere. And I think what's happened with Visceral Games and Electronic Arse, yes, Arse, is just another paragraph in a story that is going to continue. Definitely going to continue. I think more developers who want to go their own way, that are under, underneath these um, these umbrella corporations like your Activisions and your EAs, I think they're under threat. I think unless they go for EAs, profitability kind of vision like make the most money out of your game possible we need to make the most money we need to sell parts of it part and parcel after the game has already been sold i think unless they follow those kind of um those kind of paths then they are they're they're under threat i think that's what happened with the developers of shadow of war i think that's exactly what happened with the developers of uh, star wars battlefront 2 and battlefront 1 in some respects i think they were under threat of being let go or dissolved unless they heeded the the demands of their publishers. Their demands that kind of want to squeeze everything out of the one thing that has that has kept them afloat. You know, it's not it's not a good way to treat your audience. It's not a good way to treat your consumer. 
And I would bet my fucking life on it that when this Star Wars game comes out, whatever it looks like, it is going to follow that trend. It is going to follow that trend of something that's always online or or an, or an MMO of some sort, one that will be rammed with microtransactions and DLC pieces and fucking loot boxes and things that don't really make sense or have no place in a story-driven linear game. And I think we should wrap it up there. Let's let's not be too down on video games. That was the Chatty Boy podcast, episode number one. I don't know how long it was, don't know how long it's going to be after the edit. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully next week, something a little bit more upbeat, maybe. Probably won't be. So I'm, all, I'm only interested in things I like to complain about. So I'm probably just going to be moaning about something else. And as of right now, the relaunch of the channel should be in full swing. Fingers fucking crossed. This should be the first of my Let's Play series, playing with myself up and running. I'm doing FIFA versus Pro Evolution Soccer 2018. That's in two parts. The next part will be coming on Monday. The first part you should be able to go and watch right now. Also, short thoughts should be up about everybody's golf. My my short thoughts about one of the best golf games, maybe. You should be able to go and watch my my thoughts and opinions on that game. They're basically kind of they're basically short reviews. You know, they're not two thousand, three thousand long reviews. I'm not going into every bit of detail. I'm just getting getting at the core of what I want to say, mainly because I'm lazy and I don't want to be sitting there writing for days on end and on friday hilarious name pending episode number 21 it's been a long fucking time coming we'll be up we'll be there bigger better than ever probably in this setup of some description and i'll be taking the piss out of this week's news this week's video game news so keep an eye out for that anyway thank you for listening thank you for watching i hope you had a wonderful time hearing me rant about electronic arse and the complete wankers that they are Please come and let me know what you think as well in the comments section on the YouTube video or over on Twitter at Daryl Does. I'll be there ready to take your comments on board. And until next time, my friends. Fuck electronic arse. Fuck electronic arse right in the arse. In the arse? In the arse. Fuck them. Fuck them.